Hi, Joseph. This is uh, Professor Walsh. Um, I'm going to try this. Um, I, I haven't really done it recently, uh, responding to an email with a, vid uh, with a video, but I thought that uh, because of the nature of your question, that it might be better if I could explain it to you in person. And rather than set up a phone call that uh, delays and takes time to set up, I thought I would just give you my thoughts on your question, and then you can certainly respond back to me either with a, uh, an email, or you could give me a call, or you could send me a video of your own, for that matter. Um, but I want to address your question here. So you're asking about um, <clears throat> whether or not it's more effective to use soft boxes or hard lights with barn doors, uh, which is more effective. And then you're giving me this thumbnail here from what looks to be uh, Shutter Island, um, the Scorsese film. Or it could be The Aviator, I'm not sure. I see, I do see red curtains back there. This could be uh, from The Aviator or Shutter Island, I'm not sure. Um, but nevertheless, let's just take a look at what we've got here. So we've got Leo, he's looking towards camera. Uh, he's looking down into the left, uh, or to our left, I should say, camera left. Uh, he's looking down into his right, um, and we have three sources, four sources that I can see in this shot. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is evaluate what I think is present here. The first thing that I see, obviously, is there's a light outside the window that's projecting into the room. Okay, um, actually, I'm going to say there's five sources here. We've got a light projecting into the room through the window. Okay, now it's not hitting... Leo, okay, we're supposed to think that it is, um, but what we've done in order to create what we would feel were the results of that light hitting Leo is we've added lighting inside the room to light Leo and separate him from the background. So this is a light that we're meant to see on camera, but it's not necessarily a light that's doing any work for this particular shot. Okay, the next light that I see, and notice that I'm starting in the background, right? I started with the window, and now I'm starting over here. I see that there's what I call a scallop on the back wall to light up the red curtains or draperies that are hanging back there. You see how there's a slight uh, amount of light hitting this, uh, this fabric back here that's hanging on the wall? Looks like it's probably curtains or something. So there's a light hitting that, and it's not the same light that's coming through the window because they're at different angles. There's no way the light coming from outside through the window on this vector would hit the, the uh, uh, draperies the way this light is hitting the draperies. So this light was from high up on the back set wall, and it's just kind of raking down the wall in what we call a scallop fashion. Okay. All right, so that covers our background. So there's two lights right there. The next light that I see is this really strong edge light that's coming from upper camera left from over here somewhere. Okay, And I'm fairly sure that it's upper camera left because of the shadow that's being struck by his collar here. Okay, You see how the collar is creating a little bit of shadow because of the light that's, that's coming from behind him? If we go ahead and extend the edge of that shadow, it's going to... Sh point right to where that light source is coming from, right here. All right, it's coming right down like that. Okay, so this could very well be and probably is a hard light source. Okay, a hard light, light source with barn doors. Now, the difference between what a hard light source and a soft light source are doing is the focusability. So you're talking about whenever you use the soft boxes um, that they spread light all over the room and make things very, very bright. Well, they can. That's true. They can actually, uh, you know, cause you some additional headaches in terms of the spill that they create. In other words, there's light that we want to hit our subject, and then there's light that hits other things incidentally in the set that we don't really want to light up. And so we have to use flags to cut that light away. Okay? So, <clears throat> in a sense, you could say that a hard light that's focusable um, can be used from a greater distance and then we can do what we call spotting the, fo the, the fixture in. In other words, if this light that's hitting Leo was high up on a set wall that was about 20 feet away, 
um, when you turn the light on and it's and its widest beam angle, um, it probably does throw light all over the room that you don't want. But because it's a focusable light, you can spot it down and effectively change the angle to a narrower beam angle so that it can cover a greater distance. And then when it hits a wall or a subject, it, it'll do it with a smaller um, base diameter. If you imagine light coming out of a fixture, um, it kind of resembles the shape of an ice cream cone. It emanates from a single point, and as it gets further from the source, it widens out in its trajectory and becomes wider and wider and creates a cone, and that base of that cone is what is hitting a wall or hitting a subject or uh, you know, hitting a surface, and the way that the base of that cone hits the surface can be manipulated. Okay, So with a, with a hard source, we can focus it, and then we have, because it's a hard source, we have barn doors that will do basically what flags do to softer sources. But because a, a focusable light is a harder source, you can use a barn door and cut away a portion of the beam field without, uh, and, and be very successful with it and create, uh, you know, and, and in, in essence, trim down uh, the amount of light or trim down the beam field coming out of that light. A soft source, because it's soft, uh, would need, okay, let's take a uh, focusable Fresnel, a 1000 watt focusable Fresnel, for instance, has a lens on it about six inches in diameter. Uh, your soft boxes, which are supposedly the equivalent of a 1000 uh, watt light, uh, are about 24 by 36 inches, okay? So quite a bit bigger than the lens of a focusable spotlight. So if the barn doors on a focusable spotlight with a six inch lens are only about eight inches long, then how long do you suppose the barn doors for your soft light are gonna to have to be if the soft light is two feet by three feet? And the answer would be the barn doors would have to be about four or five feet long, okay? And it just so happens that grips use flags on the set that are about four feet long. And we can, in essence, make a barn door with a soft box by using a grips flag uh, maybe put one on each side, and then the way we adjust it, we can adjust it a lot like barn doors. Okay, um, so they can be essentially the, they can essentially work the same way, but soft boxes, everything is bigger, right? So in a focusable light, you might be dealing with something that fits in your hand. The soft boxes are these really big constructs that need a lot of floor space, and therefore the the things that we would use to cut them are going to be a lot bigger. So if you're using a lot of soft boxes, the one thing that you're probably going to need on your set is a lot of room to work. Because if you're in a small contained space with a light that is very big and, and is uh, projects light very broadly, uh, the small space is going to fill up very quickly and the result is going to be that everything is brightened up uh, as you say, brightening up the entire room, okay? So <clears throat> the question to your, or the answer to your question is really, it's six one and a half dozen of the other. It all depends on how much room you have to work. Now, this hard light that's hitting Leo right here is up on the set wall. It's been focused in to hit him right here, and it's very, uh, very bright, okay? And yet, the light that's actually working on his face is quite a bit softer, you see how we have a transition line that's very hard? It's a razor sharp edge, right? And it's very bright, and the contrast is very high, and the difference between highlight and shadow is very quick, right? And yet, on his face, look at the softness of the way this little bit of light just kind of fell under his low side eye, right? It's a very soft Rembrandt style of light that's hitting his face here, okay? This has been redirected probably by a bounce card that's just out of camera, right down here. And as the backlight comes and hits him in the ear, some of the spill that I'm talking about has been redirected by a bounce card right back up into his face. The minute you bounce a hard light off of a, off of a white surface, you create a soft light. Okay, so Leo is being hit by a hard light and a soft light at the same time. And because this edge is emanating from this side, there's no way that the light coming from this side of Leo's face 
would do this edge over here. So there's a supplementary edge light, we call it, working from this direction, or maybe almost, almost behind him, a true backlight, to give you the rest of the edge to finish what this light started over here. So there's another light working on him over here. All right. So Leo's being hit really hard by one strong uh, cheeker, we'd call it, right here. Redirected some of that into his face to create the key light on his face. And then he's hit by a true backlight over here to finish what this edge light cheeker is doing on the opposite side to separate him fully from both backgrounds. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five lights working on Leo. Four of them are what we would call um, uh, active and one and one passive, the bounce light source. Okay, so we've got four fixtures and one bounce card working on Leo to create this close-up right here. Okay, so it's soft light and directed light that's making this shot possible. Okay, now if you need to get a harder, harder, not hard, but a somewhat harder look out of your soft boxes, one of the things you can do is remove the front diffusion from the soft box. Okay, so if you have, let me show you uh, really quickly here, uh, lighting softbox. All right, so we've got all these soft boxes here. So <clears throat> on your two by three soft box, what you could very easily do um, is remove the front diffusion panel from that soft box. Okay, let's go to some images here. On your particular kit, the soft diffusion on the front of your soft box can be removed. Okay, you can just peel it. It's just uh, Vel it's Velcro that's attaching it. When you remove it, it's going to reveal uh, an inside baffle, um, and then your fluorescent tubes. You could leave the inside baffle in place and go without it, and 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 and. and use it and go without the front panel, uh, which would increase the contrast somewhat to your softbox. If you remove the inside baffle and the outside diffusion, what you'll get is just the results of the silver reflected surface inside the softbox and the bare fluorescent tubes. When you shoot with a softbox like that, you're getting the most contrast out of that fixture that you can. Okay. So you'll create a harder light by removing all of the diffusion from the front of the softbox and using it as basically a giant reflector uh, inside. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, you see this one right here? Uh, here, here's an even better, here's a bigger one. Okay, You see how uh, inside the softbox, it's all silver. It's like a giant reflector here. All right, that's going to be a contrasty light source as opposed to the source with the diffusion in place. This is a much softer, lower contrast output, and this is a harder contrast output. It's the same fixture, but it's used two different ways. Okay, So you have a single source softbox in your kit, like this one here. Right? If you were to remove the diffusion from the front and just use the single bulb with the reflector, you would get a pretty hard looking light. It's still not controllable because there's no barn doors, but what you can do is use, for instance, um, uh, what you need is a flag. So let me show you here what a grip flag looks like. Grip flags uh, are these little guys right here. Here's one in a stand. This is a four by four foot, we call it a floppy. It has a panel that'll flip down and essentially, when you put it in a stand like this, working on the studio floor, uh, you can hoist the flag up into the stand, mount it vertically up high, and drop the flop, we call it, and create a 4 by 8 foot black panel. This is the kind of tool that we would use on a professional set to cut a soft light source. Now, you don't have this kind of thing going on. This is a big piece of apparatus. 
But these flags here come in a variety of sizes. This one here is only 18 by 24 inches. Okay. Now, if you were to buy a flag like this, it would cost you about $40 from Matthews. Okay. And then you need a, a gobo head uh, to secure it to a C-stand. And let's see if we got a photo of that happening down here somewhere. Oh, God. We got guns and all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's see. Grip flag in C-stand. Okay, here's a C stand, right? Here's a guy setting a flag in a C stand, all right? And so here's a silk flag in a C stand. You need all this apparatus to start cutting your lights uh, like we do on a professional set. But what you can do, instead of going to this kind of trouble, right, um, is to just go down to the dollar store and pick up a two by three foot piece of art card. And they have it um, here. Foam core. They have them in 24 by 36 inch boards. You can buy them at the dollar store. I got a Dollar Tree near my house, and um, they sell uh, black on black, white on black, and white on white. And basically, you can see here how the art card is has a, a, a it's got a foam center to it. That's why they call it foam core, okay? And for a dollar a sheet, I can buy black on black or white on black. If you buy white on black, one side of this thing could be a bounce card. The other side could be a flag. If you get black on black, they work really nicely to cut your soft lights, okay? All you need to do is get uh, like a pony clamp or a, sp a spring clamp. You can buy them from Home Depot for a dollar and a half, right? A couple of those, clip your foam core to a light stand and basically make a grip flag, okay? Can you imagine taking your 24 by 36 inch piece of foam core art card that's black on black and just clipping it to a light stand, okay, with a pony clamp? And then you've got basically the same thing, but you've spent far less money, right? You're using your existing light stands that might not be acting in your shot. Uh, and a piece of foam core that costs you a dollar from Dollar, from dollar Tree, right? And you can use that because it's 36 inches long. And use it like a barn door uh, when you are lighting your shots, okay? So if you had a, if you used your single source uh, softbox with the diffusion removed, you could get an edge light that looks a lot like this in a subject if you had enough distance to make that work. And then in order to keep the, the light from the softbox off the back wall, you would apply what we call a lamp left sider, or you would take that 24 by 36 six inch piece of foam core and put it right next to the light on the left hand side and block any of the spill that's hitting the back wall. All right, that's called flagging, and we're going to learn about that. You're going to talk about that more uh, in the coming weeks in this class and, again, in Lighting 2. Okay, so you're new to it, and it's also, it's coming. The concept is coming your way very soon. Okay, and then a piece of white on black foam core positioned right here, either handheld or, again, clipped to something to redirect some of this backlight into your subject's face would give you this result right here, exactly, okay? And then all you need is a secondary light source on this side to do this. And again, you need some distance. Now, what you can do on your soft boxes is you can remove the, uh, completely remove the entire soft box and just use the bare globe. When you do that, of course, the bare globe is going to radiate all into the room um, probably even worse than with the softbox because now it's ra it's radiating in 360 degrees instead of projecting out the front through a diffusion panel. Um, so what you can use in that case to help direct some of that hard light um, is cinefoil, okay? And we call it black wrap um, because it's it's like really thick um, aluminum foil that your mom uses to bake with in the kitchen. You can buy it on a roll like this. Let's look at it. It's a little bit pricey, though. 
All right. Here's a roll of 10 inch by uh, 12 inch by 10 foot roll for ten dollars and twenty five cents. That is a terrific deal. Okay, and this cine foil, as you can see here on this roll, it's kind of crumply. Uh, it'll hold its shape. So if you have uh, a light source that you're trying to control, see how they've extended the barn door right here on this particular light? Uh, just by clipping that to the existing barn door and extending it with cine foil. You can also create shutters for softer light sources. Here's a guy making a barn door for a softbox, a small softbox. Right? You can create snoots for your lights that'll give you this, this kind of effect. Okay, you see how they just sort of wrap it around and, and, and use it to sort of control the spill on the light. This is what you're going to need if you're going to use your bulb without the, without the uh, uh, softbox attached. You're going to need some cine foil. So this is looking like a really good deal to me. Adorama Camera in New York City, and they have an online uh, store. For 10 bucks, you get about 10 feet of this stuff, and this will last you a good long time if you cut it neatly when you tear it off the roll, and when you're done using it, smooth it out as best you can, uh, and then keep it, you know, maybe in a bag or in a small box with the unused foil, and you can reuse sheets of cine foil a number of times before you have to throw it away. Okay, so cine foil on um, the bare fluorescent tube that you might use if you take everything away and just use the tube in your fixture, which is possible to do. Okay, so you got a few different ways to handle creating an image like this, and even though your soft boxes don't have barn doors, you can use the two by three foot art card with a couple of pony clamps. You can clip it right to your soft box and make a barn door for your soft box, or you can clip the foam core to a light stand and use it as a uh, as a flag, a control device, okay? And then you can use black foil on a bare tube to create a hard-looking source that you can snoop down and direct, uh, a lot like barn doors, only more organic because you can make it any shape you want now. Um, it's a couple of different ways to control the output of your sources, okay? So think about that. Um, I hope that this helps. And if you got any questions uh, for me about... Uh, controlling light uh, with uh, foam core or foil, um, shoot me an email or give me a call and we can talk about it some more, okay? I hope this answers your question and um, I look forward to hearing back from you. If not, um, I look forward to your week to uh, work. So thanks so much.